de jure or de jure, de facto or de facto, ex quo facto, ipso facto. De jure, not to be confused with du jour, which is French for the day or of the day, de jure means by right or by law. An example of de jure would be in 1066, the Duke of Normandy, William the Conqueror, sailed from France, invaded and conquered England, and became the de jure ruler, the rightful and legal ruler of England. He was also the de facto ruler. So he was the ruler by right and law, and in fact, the ruler. Getting to de facto, de facto means in fact, or factually, or the fact. An example of de facto would be this very impressive man is Cardinal Richelieu of France. Cardinal Richelieu, for many years of his career, was the de facto ruler of France. He, in fact, he was ruling the country with his intelligence, political savvy, political connections. He never was the de jure, the rightful ruler of, or legal ruler of France. However, in fact, he was the person who was the de facto ruler. De jure and de facto can also be used to describe laws or rights versus what's actually happening. So kind of almost like this is the law, this is the practice. De jure is the law or right, and de facto is the practice or what is actually happening. An example of using these two in that way would be, in the United States, many roads have a de jure speed limit and a de facto speed that people are traveling. So there is the de jure law, and then which typically is not the same as the de facto speed. So the speed limit and the speed, one could say the de jure is the speed limit and de facto is what actually is how fast people are actually driving. Here in Wisconsin, on Highway 41, the de jure speed limit is 70 miles per hour. However, the de facto speed that people are traveling is 10 to 25 miles faster than 70. So the de jure speed limit is 70, and the de facto speed that people are traveling is 80 to 95 miles per hour. So there is a discrepancy between the de jure speed limit and the de facto speed. Expo facto means after the fact. And I could use expo facto in, in a number of ways. For example, I might say, a decision was made by the managers at work about policy expo facto, after something happened. So in other words, Two months ago, one of the employees made a serious error in charging a client. Uh, the policy was changed ex quo facto, after the fact. There's a specific legal use of ex quo facto in regards to laws. Ex quo facto laws are laws that are passed later in time that have a retroactive effect. For example, let's say Five years ago, in 2018, I did not pay my taxes. At the time, there was no jail time penalty for not paying your taxes. A law was passed ex quo facto after that that said if you don't pay your taxes in 2018, you're sentenced to life at Chateau d'If. The law, the ex quo facto law, was retroactive, so... 
it went back to 2018, and because I didn't pay my taxes, I'm sentenced to life at Chateau d'If. Now, although there are ex facto laws in different countries, a lot of ex facto laws are banned. However, generally, ex facto is used to describe something that happens after a fact or after facts or after events. Ipso facto means because of the fact or by the fact or in fact. An example of ipso facto would be A equals B equals C. I can say this is a syllogism, a very simple syllogism, means that all three of these are related. So A equals B, B equals C. So I can say A equals C, ipso facto, because of the fact that A equals B and B equals C, I can say A equals C, ipso facto, a equals B equals C. So in other words, ipso facto means because of the fact. An example of using ipso facto is it, it has many uses. One could say uh, human resources people are looking for job candidates that have credentials and experience. Ipso facto, people who have degrees and experience are more likely to be offered jobs. So, because people, who, uh, because uh, human resources people are searching for people and want people who have experience and credentials, ipso facto, because of that fact, people with credentials and experience are more likely to be offered jobs.